and welcome to Wired Sussex Skills Summit. I'm going to be talking about leading, not managing. In the next 15 minutes or so, I'm going to describe managers and what they do. And they're going to describe leaders and talk about what they do, in my words. And then I'm going to reference two leadership books and have a look at two different styles of, of leadership. And I'm going to end this talk with five actions, things that you can do if you'd like to become more of a leader. So who am I? I'm Rachel Gilmore. I'm a leadership and communications coach. I work across the creative tech and cultural industries. And I've been doing this for 12 years now. And I'm fascinated in how people learn, how people develop and how people lead. In my business I help leaders and their teams to be at their best. I help them to learn to communicate more effectively so they can understand people, relate to their people and their teams so that then they can become really curious, collaborate, be creative and innovate. The kind of companies that you'll have heard of that I've worked with, I've worked with BBC and Hearst Magazines, Natural History Museum and the Charity Shelter. And here in Brighton, I've worked with Clear Left, Plugin Media and Magix. I've got a Master's in Human Resource Development and I specialise in Leadership and Development. And I've also got a Level 7 Executive Coaching and Mentoring Diploma with the Institute of Leadership and Management. So um, this talk is really a small collection of some of my thoughts, ideas, things that I've learned, my kind of experience out in the field of after doing you know over 2,000 hours of uh, coaching of leaders. I'm going to be in the panel discussion later on um, and also please do if you've got any questions post them in the Slack channel. You can also obviously contact me through social media or you can email me at rachelgilmore.com. I would really like to um, hear and see your questions. So what do managers do? In summary and in my words what managers do is they maintain the status quo. Managers are focused on productivity, efficiency, getting the job done, keeping the show on the road, and focused on operations and what's happening now. Managers make things happen. They're reacting, they're on email, they're holding team meetings, status updates, check-ins, they're talking to clients, customers, suppliers, staff, they're, they're overseeing what's happening. So the skills that good competent managers require are being observant, organized, able to give accurate and evidence-based feedback, that they're able to see things through. These are our complete finishers. They seek continuous improvement. They're looking to play team members to their strengths, helping them to develop their weaknesses and creating opportunities for people to learn and develop. It's all about helping the team to meet its objectives and targets. There's no overlap with leaders and what they're doing, but whilst the managers are focusing on the day-to-day -day and making things happen productively and efficiently, what do leaders do? Well, leaders are looking into the future. They have an eye on the big picture, they're following market trends, they are looking at what's happening in the industry at a global, a legal level. They have a more external focus. They're thinking about how these trends and patterns might impact, affect, and create threats and opportunities for the organisation. And then they're communicating all of this to their team and to their organisation. They're motivating and inspiring others through their compelling vision. And they're focused on their purpose and keeping the organisation on purpose. And they hold a belief that what they are doing is right and it will succeed. So this is management and leadership kind of in my words. But let's have a look at what Jim Collins had to say about this. In 2001, Jim Collins wrote a book, Good to Great. It was a really thoroughly researched book, so it's kind of stood the test of time. What he did is he looked at a lot of organisations that were kind of doing okay, but then suddenly started to perform really, really well. And he went and investigated what were the kind of component parts to that success, to that turnaround from these good companies becoming great companies. 
And the first component part to that success was leadership. Um, he calls it level five leadership. So let's have a look at what he means. And then I'll break down the leadership behaviours. So when Jim Collins looks at the people in a highly effective, successful organisation, um, kind of in a kind of standard hierarchical organisation that we're mostly familiar with, you kind of split people into these five levels. At level one, you've got a highly capable individual. Level two, a contributing team member. Level three, a competent manager. A bit like how I described earlier, these managers are capable of organising their teams efficiently, um, helping them to reach their objectives and targets. And then, interestingly, he splits out leadership and leaders. So le he's got level four leaders, which are, he calls effective leaders. And he says this is where the majority of leaders can be found. So they're able to create the commitment from their team. They can, can get their team to vigorously pursue a clear and compelling vision. And they're also able to create a high performing team. But he, in these companies that went from good to great, he, he spotted something else, um, which he called level five leadership. And these, the great leaders, um, these have all the abilities of those other four levels, but these leaders had a unique combination of will and humility. And it was this combination of will and humility that made them great. So what did these level five leaders do, according to Jim Collins? So there was a, there's a kind of um, paradox in these kind of leaders. They're strong will, but humble. They have this will with humility, and that's what Jim Collins identified as making them great. They are very people focused, so they get the right people on the bus and the wrong people off the bus, and then they decide where it's going. So they really do focus on, on the who, on the people, about getting the right team in place with the right behaviours before they think about vision, strategy, organisational structure. Jim Collins talked about three disciplines for making people decisions in these types of organisations by these leaders. Um, just in, one, if in doubt, don't hire, keep looking. Two, if you know that you need to make a people change, act and act quickly. Three, put your best people on the biggest opportunities and not your biggest problems. He talked about these leaders confronted the brutal facts of their current reality and that helped them make the right kind of business decisions. And they created a culture where people could be heard and truth could be heard. And that they retain this absolute faith that the company would prevail. So the behaviours of these level five leaders, this paradox that they experience around being ambitious, but the ambition is on behalf of the organisation to excel rather than themselves. At the same time, they tend to be really modest about what they personally contribute and are self-effacing. They're driven, fanatically driven, obsessed even, to produce exceptional results, but on a sustainable basis. And that's the key word here, it's sustainability, not the result of a one-off heroic effort. They build successes, they build successes to be even more successful than, than they are, and they share praise. So when things are going well, they share praise with the team, and when things go wrong, they take the blame. And this sort of sharing plays, but taking the blame makes a team that's extremely loyal and committed to them. Jim Collins said these leaders are normal people. Um, they don't have these kind of larger than life um, personalities. They're not these celebrities. And I think this is a kind of more recent myth that we've grown up with, that, you know, that to be a leader, you've got to have this huge um, character. You've got to have this charisma like Richard Branson or Elon Musk. Not according to Jim Collins. He said that these leaders came from within the organisation and it, and it was their, their greatness came from kind of quiet, hard work rather than these heroic acts. So Jim Collins recommends that you develop your professional skills and your emotional intelligence. You develop your humility. It's good to be ambitious, but better to be ambitious and humble. Develop your emotional intelligence. There's lots of... Um, uh, things like Myers-Briggs that can help you, There's lots of tools like Myers-Briggs out there that can help you develop your emotional intelligence. Develop your loyal followers, 
recruit from within, develop your drive to set yourself clear and exciting goals, hold yourself and others to high standards, and lead with passion to ensure that you have a clear and compelling vision. So that was Jim Collins, Good to Great, 2001, Turn of the Millennium. And, you know, 20 years later, um, there is a bit, a kind of a different thinking, I think, now um, to then that kind of builds and re builds and is a new iteration on Jim Collins' work. So in 2014, a book came out. I found it a couple of days, a couple of years later, but it was a real breakthrough book for me, which was Frederick Lalu um, reinventing organisations. What he said is that there is a kind of a new. We're going into a new wave or a new stage of our human consciousness, where we no longer kind of want to work for these top-down hierarchical organisations that serve shareholder value, stakeholder interests that um, we don't want these companies suffer, people suffer from burnout and a lack of meaning. So he said there's a, a new wave of organisations where people seek meaning and purpose, where they want to do good. They want to make a difference to their community, to society, to the world at large. And um, that there's a kind of tipping point and that people are turning away from the money and the objectives and the targets and profit to companies with purpose and meaning and making a difference. And it spoke to, it spoke to me. And what, um, a bit like Jim Collins, Frederick Lalu went out into, out into the marketplace and went and found the companies that were operating like this. There are lots of small companies operating like this. But for the purpose of the book, and I'd love to tell you loads more about the book, but I haven't got time, so I'm just hoping to whet your appetite so you'll go and read it. But what Lalu did is he found some organisations of 100 people or more that were having real success, where they were following a purpose, they were doing what they believed was right, and they were um, exceeding expectations. So he went in and had a look at what they were doing. What he found there is that they kind of have three operating principles, self-management, um, self-managing teams, that they have hold, that wholeness is encouraged and recognized and um, um, acknowledged and rewarded. That is that you come to work as your whole self with your beliefs, your feelings, your multiple roles in life, your experiences, and that that is encouraged um, and it's very inclusive and that these organisations are driven and focused on an evolutionary purpose. So a really positive purpose about making a real positive difference to the world, to the community, to the people's society. And organisations like this then attract clients, attract customers and attract a workforce that also have the same or a similar purpose. In these organisations, the role of a leader is really turned on its head because a leader, instead of being at the top of this sort of hierarchical power structure, um, and this power structure can often become like a bottleneck where the leaders become out of touch, in this kind of structure, the leader becomes in service to the organisation and the organisation operates like a living organism and the leader is in service to it. Because they've got self-managing teams that are doing all the decision-making, the role of the leader here is to hold, hold the company to its purpose, that when times are hard, there's difficult decisions that need to be made, or when there's really exciting opportunities, that the leader makes sure that the organisation stays on purpose and stays focused on its purpose. The leader in this type of organisation also has to role model self-management, has to role model wholeness, has to kind of go to deeper kind of depths in themselves and have to be vulnerable and um, and be vulnerable with themselves so that they can encourage their team to do the same thing. And they have to role model all this behaviour all the time so that the organisation can follow and so that the whole organisation can operate like this. So in these types of organisations, um, when we look at the leadership behaviours, um, they are an iteration of um, Jim Collins's 
um, behaviours, I think, a more modern uh, contemporary iteration. And again, there's still this kind of paradox. So in, in the way Lalu described these leaders is they still have a paradox, but their paradox is around vulnerability and strength that they're not in opposition with one another, but actually they are polar polarities that reinforce one another. Also in these types of organizations is a belief that we can both be fully ourselves and be working towards achieving an organization's deeper purpose. And that we are, that people are at their most productive and joyful when they are, when who they are is energized by a broader purpose that nourishes our calling and our soul. So you can hear the different kind of language in this kind of book that reflects this kind of shift or wave in human consciousness around purpose and meaning. So the CEOs in, in these companies, as identified by Lalu, role modelled virtues such as humility, trust, courage, candour, vulnerability and authenticity. And then they invite their colleagues to do the same. So that's something you can do. You can take those six virtues. You can rate yourself against those virtues. You can ask the people around you to rate you and ask you for evidence of where they see you acting with humility or candor or where they don't see you. And that, and that can be a way of you developing this type of leadership style. So Frederick Lou. The leaders are in service to the organisation and an upholder of the purpose. Talked about Jim Collins and the type of level five leadership there. And I put into my words, management and leadership. So to finish off, what are the actions? What are the actions you can take if you want to become more of a leader? So first of all, first action, I'd suggest you book time in with yourself every week, away from your desk, away from email, to the to-do list, it should be a time of the week when you're at your best. You could go for a walk, go for a swim, read a book, but ponder on a strategic future problem. Find a tribe, action two, find a tribe of people who are a bit like you, either in the same industry, same level, same amount of ambition. Meet with them regularly every four to six weeks. You're looking for a group of people that inspires you to do stuff better. Um, a group of people that will encourage you to stretch, to challenge yourself and to think about things in new ways. Action three, think about what kind of leader you want to be. Do, what do you want to be remembered for? What would you like people to say about you? Think of all the great people around you that have led you at different times in your life. Think about their qualities and their attributes and, and how they displayed them. and then emulate them, copy them and role model, make those behaviours, those qualities and attributes your own. Four, read books, listen to podcasts, watch videos, there's loads of content out there around leadership um, and reflect on it and think about you and use it to sort of benchmark yourself. Um, I'd really recommend that you go and watch Simon Sinek's um, TED talk on how great leaders inspire action and I would do his golden circles exercise on yourself um, ask yourself the question why do you do what you do find out your purpose and use it as a guiding light to prioritize all your activities and finally and of course I would say this go and find and work with a coach a coach can help you create a dedicated space um, can be a sound, confidential sounding board, can help you to kind of navigate through your problems, find exciting solutions to, to what you and your organisation face. And you and your team um, and your organisation, however big or small, will benefit from you having a coach. It's a really worthwhile investment and you will notice a positive ripple effect from it um, right across your work and personal life. So those are the five actions. Hope you found this talk useful and interesting. Thanks very much and thanks to Wired Sussex Skills Summit.